Hello and welcome to the Business Standard Morning Show. I'm Kanishka Gupta and let's have a look at the stories for the day. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged citizens to focus on five resolutions to make India a developed nation in the next 25 years. It was the key highlight of the PM speech which he gave from the ramparts of the Red Fort on the 76th Independence Day on Monday. So, how will the country and its economy have to perform to achieve this ambitious goal by 2047? Today's segment will try and answer. Seventy-five years ago, Jawaharlal Nehru had addressed the nation from here as he laid the foundation of a new nation. And this Monday, when Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the country from the ramparts of the Red Fort, he laid the foundation of the next 25 years. The sky was overcast with a slight nip in the air. Wearing a tricolor turban, PM Modi asked people to focus on Panch Pran, or Five Promises. First, to move forward with bigger results and the resolve of a developed India. Second to erase all traces of servitude. Third, to be proud of India's legacy. Fourth, to focus on India's unity, which is its strength. And fifth, to fulfill the duties of citizens with honesty. But what is the ground situation like? A comparison with developed countries shows that the government has a long road ahead if it wants to turn India into a developed economy within the next 25 years. In 2021, India's per capita income calculated in international dollars based on purchasing power parity stood at $7,333 and it was less than half of China's in 2021. It was only a seventh of Organization for Economic Cooperation of Development Countries per capita income of $48,482. OECD is a group of developed economies. While India's per capita income grew at double the rate of OECD nations in the last 25 years, it would need to grow at 12.4% consistently to catch up to OECD countries within the next 25 years. It will need to grow at 8.2% just to reach the level at which they are today. India will need to take similar leaps to catch up when it comes to social indicators as well. The infant mortality rate, the number of infant deaths per 1000 live births, reduced from 76 in 1996 to 27 in 2020, but it was still over four times the OECD average of six. At the current pace, India will only be able to achieve an infant mortality rate of 10. Similarly, life expectancy at birth would have to increase faster than it did in the last 25 years to reach OECD levels. At the current pace, it would fall short of OECD economies. India added 9 years to life expectancy for both males and females between 1995 and 2020. Prime Minister Modi also listed equality, specifically equality for women as one of the five pledges citizens must take. It is a pledge that will challenge the nation on many fronts. One of the bleakest spots is the female labor force participation rate. It has dropped sharply and steadily in the last decade and a half from 32% in 2005 to just 19.2% .2 in 2021, although the latest data is small recovery from 18.6% the lowest in 32 years in the first pandemic year of 2020. However, it is not all gloom. In the recently concluded Commonwealth Games, 40% of India's medalists were women, though that is lower than the 46.4% in the 2002 Games. The new clarion call given by the Prime Minister will call for all levels of government, both centre and state, in all sections of the citizenry, irrespective of caste, creed or religion, to work hand in hand while policies and their effective implementation will be the primary levers to achieve this goal, ensuring unity and thus a unified purpose should be the first step towards Mission 2047. Sab achhi dikh rahi hain yaar. Kaun se kare dun? Ye to wahi baat hui. 4000 shares listed hai. Kaun sa lu? Wo to sabse aasan hai. Tujhe 5 paisa nahi pata? Shh. अब तो सबको पता है 
फाइव पैसा पर है चार हजार स्टॉक्स की रिसर्च टेक्निकल टूल्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडिया डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा नाउ अब तो सबको पता है इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विद फाइव पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुल बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग He had a penchant for risk taking and carried an air of optimism around him. He was a living embodiment of calmness in a volatile market. Prime Minister Narendra Modi led the nation in paying tribute to ace investor Rakesh Chunjunwala, who died at the age of 62 on Sunday. Our next report offers a peek into the ace investor's journey. The big bull of Dalal Street, India's Warren Buffett, man with the Midas touch, the eternal India optimist and king of the stock market. The legendary investor Rakesh Junjunwala carried many nicknames. His death on Sunday at 62 prompted an outburst of tributes from business persons, politicians and investors big and small who followed his insights and stock bets. Junjunwala's investing career started in 1985. with 5000 rupees of borrowed money at the time of his death his net worth was estimated at 5.8 billion dollars or 46000 crore rupees his first big profit came from the 5000 shares of tata tea he bought in 1986 in 3 months junjunwala tripled his money there was no looking back after that in the late 1980s the qualified chartered accountant made a leveraged bet on iron ore exporter sesa goa which brought him his first crores He bought the stock at 25 to 26 rupees and sold the holding in tranches riding the stock till it reached 2200 rupees. His investment in Tata Power also paid off at the time. Junjunwala's affinity for Tata Group stocks continued. In fact, Tata's Titan company made him the most wealth. He first purchased the jewelry and watchmaker shares in 2002. His other stock holdings from Tata Group were Tata Motors Indian Hotels Company and Tata Communications. He also multiplied his investments several times in stocks such as Lupin and Crystal. His biggest holding at the time of his death remained Titan, accounting for over 11000 crore rupees or one third of disclosed portfolio value. Although famous for his bets in listed stocks, Junjunwala did not shy away from taking bigger risks through private market investments. He reaped a windfall when three of his portfolio companies Nazara Technologies, Metro Brands and Star Health and Allied Insurance hit the public markets last year. A business standard analysis showed that 76% of the value of Junjunwala's disclosed portfolio emerged in the last 7 years after he turned 55, and the biggest gains came in the past 2 years. The value of his disclosed portfolio rose from 8431 crore rupees in March 2020 to 30652 crore rupees in August 2022. his love for india his love for the market and love for the friends and love for the life he was more than just a person he was a india bhakt i would say so he was a terrific uh, india storyteller a terrific uh, believer you know bo all you know he was a great uh, great human being of course he made money but he wanted genuinely he wanted his friends his uh, relatives his uh, uh, actually the masses he wanted people really to make money he was a philanthropist he always said 25 30% one third of the his uh, earnings must go to charity i met him first in 1998 and since then i have been seeing uh, his conviction on india conviction on stocks conviction on the state of the market became more and more you know confident uh, as the times went by he would always say it's not about making money it's about being right so he would always believe in predicting predicting about the company about the economy Uh, about the world also to one level he was a economic philosopher also first thing is he had tremendous sense of markets where the market is where the stock is if the stocks in which he has researched he would be so much ahead of time he would obviously tell us that this is what i bought or and this much i have bought he would not hesitate disclosing his position which is very unlike many people i remember buying a, a titan in 2002 3 the kind of conviction he brought and he had tremendous liking for tata group of companies he was a terrific bargain picker he had that foresight or capability to see the future always uh, uh, wanting to help friends you know whoever has come in touch with him he has tried to help one way or other 
and not only money but uh, in every other aspect whether it is guidance whether it is uh, uh, having views and you could consult him on anything you know even on inheritance you know but what people don't realize is that he was a brilliant chartered accountant chartered accountant to start with and he was self made rakesh junjunwala was astute not just as an investor who picks stocks for long term holding but as a trader too in 2018 He said that he made a lot of money by shorting stocks and one of his biggest fortunes came from short selling in 1992 when the Harshad Mehta scam roiled the markets. Junjunwala had his misses in stocks too like Devan Housing Finance Corporation, DB Realty and Mandana Retail. While some of his private investments paid off handsomely, in March last year he acknowledged that half of his 20 private equity investments by then had turned out to be flops. His last bet was Akasa Air in which he held a 40% stake. Motilal Oswal's Ramdev Agarwal described this bet as the ultimate bargain as Junjunwala made the most of the discounts offered by the aircraft manufacturer. Junjunwala made his last public appearance at the inaugural flight of Akasa on August 7th. Among India's notable philanthropists, Junjunwala's faith in the India story and bullish commentary on the economy and markets were visible till the very end. Such was his infectious optimism for India that Junjunwala told a business news channel just 6 days before his death that regardless of global developments Indian markets will grow but at a slower pace according to him India was entering a golden age Yaar mat pooch yaar फिर से स्टॉक्स में फंस गया तो स्टॉक्स के साथ बॉन्ड्स इंश्योरेंस गोल्ड में बैलेंस कर इसमें बहुत तामचाम है तुझे फाइव पैसा नहीं पता अब तो सबको पता है फाइव पैसा है ऑल इन वन अकाउंट डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा ना अब तो सबको पता है Investing made easy and rewarding with five paisa. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. A widely shared video of Junjunwala says a lot about his indomitable spirit. Bound to a wheelchair and suffering from a serious ailment, Junjunwala couldn't stop himself when someone tuned in famous Bollywood item number Kajrare. He almost leapt out of chair while dancing. His sudden death has left the entire investor community in a state of shock. Let us now move on to India Inc's struggle with inflation. Companies hiked prices to cushion their margin, but it hit the volumes especially in the rural markets with the commodity prices cooling off will the upcoming quarters be better for india inc or will global growth risk keep the ride bumpy let's find out in our next report A look at the June quarter earnings presents a mixed picture of India Inc. While commodity users bore the brunt of elevated raw material prices, commodity suppliers enjoyed abnormally high profits. Profit margins, however, squeezed across the board as corporates couldn't pass on the entire increase in costs to consumers. Analysis of about 1940 companies excluding financials shows that while aggregate net profit rose from 1.41 trillion rupees to 1.58 trillion rupees on a year on year basis in Q1 FY23 the aggregate profit margin contracted from 7.9% to 6% sequentially net profit fell from 2.03 trillion rupees and margin shrank from 8.3% Within the Nifty 50 universe, profits of the 31 Nifty companies that had released their results till the end of July rose 12% year on year, single-handedly driven by BFSI. If one were to exclude banks and financials, the profits would have declined 1% year on year. Analysts say unusually high inflation was the biggest sore point for earnings. Along with the really high inflation, the price hike has negatively impacted the demand scenario across the sector guidance given by the most of companies also re- reflects the concern of declining demand and have reduced their growth guidance on its part the reserve bank of india has hiked repo rate by 140 basis points and cash reserve ratio by 40 bps so far in fy23 yet 
it has kept FY23 inflation estimate unchanged at 6.7% year-on-year. Market mavens say the status quo on inflation above the upper tolerance level of 6% entails risk of destabilizing demand expectations. Overall, FY23 earnings has been downgraded by over 4% driven by aviation, metals and energy. Going forward, earnings growth will hinge on commodity prices. Vetri Subramaniam of UTI AMC, for instance, believes with the retreat in commodity prices, the worst of the margin pressure is behind us. Earnings estimates in sectors where volumes and pricing are sensitive to global growth trends could see challenges as concerns about growth. Motilal Oswal too says, earnings miss by heavyweights Reliance Industries and Tata Motors led to aggregate earnings miss in Q1 FY23. However, as the benefit of the recent moderation in commodity costs start accruing in the second half of fiscal 2023, we expect laggards of Q1 to contribute in growth. Stock markets will be guided by global queues and stock-specific action today. अब क्या किया? शेयर्स में ट्रेडिंग। तुम्हें फाइल पैसा नहीं पता? ओए, अब तो सबको पता है। फाइव पैसा पर मिलते हैं रिसर्च टूल्स, पोर्टफोलियो एनालिटिक्स और इन्वेस्टमेंट आइडियाज़ भी। डाउनलोड फाइव पैसा। नाउ। अब तो सबको पता है। इन्वेस्टिंग मेड इजी एंड रिपोर्टिंग विथ फाइव पैसा। इन्वेस्टमेंट इन स The Reserve Bank of India recently disallowed the use of letters of comfort, which may impact loans worth 35,000 crore rupees. So, what is this letter of comfort? Find out in our next segment. In April this year, the Union Finance Ministry had barred ministries and departments from issuing Letter of Comfort. The idea was to usher in transparency. And now, the Reserve Bank of India has disallowed such quasi-bank guarantee instrument provided by a corporate. So what is this document? A Letter of Comfort is a support document issued to a borrower that adds some strength to the transaction when giving loans. Letter of Comforts are usually issued by a third party or a stakeholder in the transaction. For instance, a holding company can give a Letter of Comfort on behalf of its subsidiary or a government can issue a Letter of Comfort for public sector enterprises. The Letter of Comfort can also be issued by banks, NBFCs and auditors. The Letter of Comfort is not legally binding or an obligation by the holding company to repay the loans. It is just an assurance to the lender that the holding company is aware of the transaction, the policies of the subsidiary and its intentions in seeking a loan. This provides some comfort to the financial institution to lend money for short term or long term. One can say that the Letter of Comfort could become a moral obligation and not a legal one. In some cases, the letter of comfort can become legally binding. Sometimes the wording used in the letter could be interpreted in a way to force legal obligations and hence those issuing it are doubly careful. A letter of comfort is different from a letter of guarantee. As spelled out in the name, the letter of guarantee acts as a commitment to the lender that the issuing company is taking responsibility for the repayment. It is also legally binding and the transaction becomes an obligation for the guarantor. Holding companies usually give letters of comfort when they are unable or unwilling to give letters of guarantees. According to a recent report in a leading daily, loans worth thousands of crores are at risk of downgrade as the Reserve Bank of India disallowed letters of comfort provided by a corporate. The RBI has also directed all credit rating agencies to rely on explicit guarantees and not letters of comfort or support while assigning credit enhancement ratings. I will Backed by the nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker. 
to every Indian. Meanwhile, the finance minister recently permitted state-owned NBFCs to issue letter of comfort to banks for fund tie-up for infra projects. That is all for today. We will be back with more news and analysis on our next episode. Stay tuned and thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.